I want to say a few words about Starit Silwan. Many of you have read Father Safroni's book on him. And I want to remind you of a few passages. The first one I want to remind you of is his first memory, a memory of his about his father. His father was a peasant, a believing, a devout peasant, not a slave of the rules, but one whom the rules carried heavenwards. And on a week in Lent, he asked his son to prepare a meal for him. The boy was still unaware of things, and he prepared to him a meal that was not a Lenten one. The father said nothing. He ate this meal. He thanks the boy. He thanks God. But a year later, when the time came to do the same, he said to the future star Silwan, prepare a meal. But this time, remember that it is Lent. Last time, you gave me a meal that was not Lenten, and I ate it, not to hurt you, but I ate it as though it was corrupted food, carrion. Don't do that again. And this, the starets never for, forgot. Not only the fact that he had broken the rules, which he was not aware of, but of the mercy of his father, of his readiness to be soiled rather than hurt him. So it probably was not, because God received his love, his compassion, his tenderness as a gift that purified all food he could have received. But he also gave new life and new depths to his son. The second thing I want to quote, I can't remember what it is from Father Safroni's book, or from one of the letters with the stars wrote to us in France many years ago before he died. He spoke of a man, a peasant of the same village who had committed a murder. He went to prison for it. But when he came out, he took part in the rejoicing of the village any feast that was organized. And the stars, the future stars, saw him dance and sing and rejoice. And he came up to him and said, How can you? You have killed the man. How can you rejoice? And the man said to him, I did kill a man. And I was put into prison. And in prison I realized what I had done. And I cried before God and I repented before God and of a sudden the Holy Spirit taught me that I was healed and I can now rejoice in God, rejoice in life because I am redeemed by Christ and what has happened indeed was terrible but it is the past but the past that does no longer weigh on my shoulders. I'm not quoting exactly the words because I read them almost 60 years ago. But these are the thoughts. And then something else. For a long time, when he became a monk, he longed to meet the Lord face to face to experience the presence and the action of the Holy Spirit. And he prayed and prayed and prayed and cried. For 14 years, he fought against the absence of God. And on the 14th year, he came to a point when he could not endure it anymore. 
and he turned to God and said, You are merciless. No prayer can make you respond. And at that moment, when a last hope in his own prayer and strength, in his own longing for God, broke down, and there was nothing left but God and him, he suddenly saw Christ standing before him. And what he saw was such compassion, such love, such mercy in his eyes and face that he never in his life could forget it. And he sang the love of God throughout his life, writing in his diaries, one after the other, what he had experienced of love divine for him and for others. He could not write in, with the pen because he was not edu educated enough. He wrote with a pencil, but he wrote words that came from God. And among them, there is a passage. Did I read it in Father Saffroni's book or in a letter of old? I can't tell you, I can't remember. But he said something that shows how deeply he had, he was merged in the presence of the Holy Spirit, how deeply, profoundly, integrally, he was pervaded by his presence. He said that even all the scriptures disappeared, all the testimonies disappeared, the Holy Spirit could still teach us all things. And indeed, we can see that it is not quotations he gives us in his writings, it is words of truth, words of life that the Holy Spirit himself had inspired to him. He had reached a point where he could live in God he, with the love of men, loving everyone, caring for everyone, but not dependent on it. And as he, when he came to die, he was lying in the infirmary of his monastery on Mount Athos, and everyone tried to be around him for him not to be left alone facing death and not to die in loneliness. But God knew that he was so completely at one with him that he did not need a help which was an act of human love but which could be transcended, fulfilled by love divine and indeed those who surrounded him left him for a very short time while they were busy with something else in need of another, for another patient perhaps and he died he did not die alone he died with God who had come to take him by the hand and lead him into the heavenly kingdom this is a man whom we remember today, and there is a great deal more in his writings and in his person, which I cannot repeat, but pray to him, remember him, read what he writes, and you will feel that you become free in God, not a prisoner of the rules, but use rules as a help, as wings to soar Godwards, and that life will be God's own life in you that needs nothing but the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen.